episode of Proactive Parenting, a show where I offer you judgment-free advice on how to raise value-driven children in a way that's right for your family using the most current research out there. I'm your host, Dr. Deanna Marie Mason. I'm a certified pediatric nurse practitioner, published author, and expert in child development. I'm also the mom of two fabulous kiddos, so I know firsthand how much misinformation is out there, and that's why I'm here. So grab yourself a cup of coffee or tea and settle in. This is a safe space where you can ask questions and get real honest answers about how to raise kids in a way that works for you. We're nearing that special time of year when some children begin writing letters to Santa Claus with their Christmas wishes. Other children celebrate the Festival of Lights of Hanukkah over eight nights and others will honor Kwanzaa by learning the seven principles during a week of celebration. Most of these festivities involve gift giving, so this is also a good time of year when parents begin to feel uncertain about which toys are appropriate for their children. I think most of us as parents are familiar with spending a lot of time and money searching for gifts that after being unwrapped and briefly explored, end up in the back of the closet, tucked into a toy box, or simply discarded. I know that watching this process really irritates me. Um, When my kiddos were little, I listened to them talk about toys or gifts that they really wanted. And at times it felt like they were almost begging for them. So I went on the search, found what they wanted and happily wrapped them up and tucked them under the tree. In Spain, we celebrated Los Reyes Magos, or the Three Kings Day that happens on Epiphany, or the 12th day of Christmas, when historically in the Bible it said that three kings visited Jesus and gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So just think, 12 days after Christmas, by this time, my kiddos had been gorging on Christmas sweets and celebrations for weeks. Um, It was always a really emotional time for them. And I would see that they exploded with joy when they opened their gifts, but then later left them sitting around. Um, Whether that was the Healy roller shoes that my daughter begged for, or the BB-8 Star Wars robot that cost a fortune that my son repeatedly petitioned for. Most of these highly advertised top toys or must-have gifts were just marketing successes. They were literally sold to children and parents rather than meeting anyone's real desires or goals. Even with my background and knowledge about children and development, my family fell prey to savvy marketing and repeated advertising. It's hard to overcome the persuasive influence that advertising firms have, even if you're watching for it. And it's virtually impossible for our little ones to avoid being influenced. Even with my background and knowledge about children and development, my family fell prey to savvy marketing and repeated advertising. It's hard to overcome the persuasive influence that advertising firms have, even if you're watching for it. And it's virtually impossible for our little ones to avoid being influenced by what they see in commercials, product placements in their favorite YouTube videos, and pop-up ads while hanging out online. And for us as parents, it's hard not to get your kid what everybody else is having or getting for the holidays. There is real peer pressure amongst parents too. So this episode has been developed with all of these influences in mind and as a way to offset some of the pressures that we feel during this season of celebration and gift giving. Please know that I understand that each of these special celebrations are so much more than the gifts, but modern society and Western culture really does put a lot of focus on the material aspect of the holidays. And while the material part is usually the least relevant to the actual holiday in comparison to the religious or cultural parts, this side is what often leads to feelings of frustration or confusion. So that's why I want to spend some time on this particular aspect of the holidays today. The key to finding toys and gifts that are appreciated on the day and for all the days of the year is to match our child's age and development with the gift we are selecting. 
It can be easy to rely on the age recommendations on the box of the toy, but the makers and advertisers often distort the age recommendation in order to sell more toys. They aren't as concerned with our children's happiness and enjoyment as they are with pushing their product. Manufacturers and advertisers are also very good at doing things that make a toy or gift look really attractive and have hired child actors to look like they're really enjoying playing with that particular toy. But the key thing to remember is that the child is acting, or perhaps they only recorded a portion of the time when the child was actually engaging with the toy, if it's a baby or something like that in the advertisement. But remember, there is so much manipulation to get children and parents to want to purchase toys that it is really hard to make a good decision. To give toys or gifts that our children will play with throughout the year and look back fondly when, they get, when they're older, I mean, you know those toys that you still keep from your childhood because you can't bear to separate from them. Well, to touch on that level of joy, we have to really pay attention to development. If we evaluate if our child has the ability to manipulate the toy, interact with it without becoming frustrated, and still explore and expand their understanding while playing, well, then we've hit the ball out of the park. When I talked about my mistakes buying Healy's and the BB-8 robot, well, even though my kiddos asked for these toys, the toys were developmentally too advanced for both of them. At the time they asked for them, neither of my little ones had the gross motor or fine motor skills to actually play with these toys. This created a lot of frustration because they had seen kids their age in the advertisements successfully playing with these items and having a great time. Their repeated failure to master the skills necessary to actually play with these toys created a deep-seated frustration and exhaustion that the only thing that their minds could do to cope with this discomfort was to stop playing with the toy. In the end, they rejected the toy because it was essentially showing them that they were incapable. Now, of course, this wasn't actually true. Rather, my kiddos had seen child actors having success with these toys in an artificial environment of a studio and were comparing themselves to this unrealistic standard. They were bound to fail. Why? Because developmentally, very few children their age would have had the gross and fine motor development necessary to fully play with these toys. Sure, a child who had extensive dance training or had a natural athletic disposition that was very connected to how their body moved in space may have been able to figure these toys out. But my kiddos were normal, healthy souls who were developmentally on track for their age and stage. They lacked this advanced training or natural gift that would have helped them enjoy the toy. And honestly, many of our children fall into this same trap. They see something that looks like it's for them. They'll ask for it, they get it, and they can't make it work right to enjoy the toy. So they become frustrated and they drop it. It really isn't their fault. They are easily swayed by marketing and we are swayed by our desire to give them what they want. So in the end, everything gets mixed up. However, by focusing on who our child is, what level of development they have, and avoiding the social or advertising pressures around this year's hot item, we can set our kiddos up to receive gifts that bring them real joy. And that joy will keep them playing with those gifts for months and years to come. So to help parents feel more secure in choosing gifts this holiday season, I put together a list of guidelines to help you select toys that are appropriate for the age and development of each of your children. Let's start with our babies. This is oftentimes a big source of confusion for many people. A baby's development is centered on increasing strength and coordination, improving memory, and their evolving verbal communication or, or their ability to talk. Strength and coordination involve learning to control their bodies, to begin to creep, crawl, and then walk. It also involves being able to manipulate objects in their environment, such as bringing food to their mouths or grabbing a toy. Improving memory is a cognitive process 
in which babies learn that objects and people are permanent. This means that mom still exists when she leaves the room or a toy is still available if it's covered by a blanket. Now, I know it seems like simple stuff, but it really is a wonderfully complicated ability of the brain. And finally, babies progress in their ability to communicate verbally throughout the first year of life. Their cries gradually modify into words as they learn to control their tongues and mouths to create specific sounds that in turn create specific reactions in those listening. So what does all this have to do with toys? Well, toys that help babies move forward on one or all of these tasks will be enjoyable to our baby because it will support their healthy growth and development and it will not cause delays or damage to that natural development. Therefore, selecting toys that match the development of our child is the best way to find a great toy that our baby will love. Young babies, zero to six months, are gonna to enjoy toys that provide a sense of security, such as a stuffed animal, soft doll, or baby blankets. They also like play mats with hanging objects and bright colors to help improve eye coordination and strength. Our older babies, six months to 12 months, will enjoy teething rings because just before six months of age, they'll begin to cut their first teeth and teething rings provide comfort and help them get those new teeth, especially the molars, to erupt from their gums. Older babies also enjoy rattles that reward them with noise for their movements and little ones nearing 10 months can begin to play with blocks to improve control and coordination of their hands and arms. And, of course, we can't forget about books. Both picture books are wonderful at this age and anything that has to do with touch. So if there's like those tactile books with like rough surfaces or soft surfaces, babies love that. Our babies love to be read to and look at the pictures in those books. So picking books with lots of bright colors also captures their eye. And we know that reading out loud to our babies helps tremendously in their language development. One thing I need to bring up about toys for babies is related to electronic toys and applications that are available in most toy stores or on computers, tablets, and smartphones. These toys and applications generally memorize infants and keep them completely spellbound for extended periods of time. However, these toys and applications do not support baby's natural development. Playing with a computer, tablet, or phone will not improve strength and coordination. It won't improve memory. And research studies have shown that they do not help improve communication. Now, advertisers are going to try to convince us as parents that their products are good for babies. But over and over, the data shows that this is not true. Babies do not need nor benefit from electronics in any form, including electronic books. Traditional toys better support our baby's natural development. So if we move on to new walkers, which are slightly older, 12 to 18 months, they're gonna enjoy those touch books again, or books with colorful pictures to help with language development and can be used for quiet activity time right before bedtime. So books that with a picture of a cat and the word cat on the other page, or books about feelings with a, with a face showing expression and then the feeling that matches that, that type of book really does help with language development as we say the word out loud and they can see that visual in the book to describe the word. Choosing stories with simple ideas or, as I said, books with vocabulary on animals, emotions, colors, and such are really gonna be the most engaging and fun for our little kiddos at this age. Additionally, our new walkers love toys that help them be active and mobile, such as push cars or pull toys. And both of these types of toys are gonna to help develop growth motor skills, which will help our little ones master walking and running sooner. And for our early toddlers, age 18 to 24 months, they're gonna be very active because they're trying to perfect all of their motor skills, both with their hands and arms and their legs. For this reason, getting an activity table would be ideal. Activity tables with lots of buttons, levers, and pulls 
help to integrate sensory information and coordination. And they can also walk around the table. And if we want to convert them into music lovers, another great option are musical players with simple melodies and lyrics to encourage careful listening and movement. So if you get them something that plays music with songs like head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, where they can actually go and touch their head, shoulders, knees and toes, or the itsy bitsy spider with those movements of itsy bitsy spider goes up the water spout. And they can pretend their fingers are the rain falling down to wash the spider out. Those types of players that have simple melodies and lyrics that they can listen to and repeat back, really help them connect what they're listening to with controlling their body. And we also know that from the research that music can help develop language and memory. So this is really a great way to get our little one learning without them even knowing it. And then our late toddlers, ages 24 to 36 months, are starting to learn through imitation. And that is precisely what engages our late toddlers and what they really like to do. So for this age, we can select toys that help our children pretend to be like adults, such as moms, dads, grandparents, aunts, uncles, to support this developmental task. So what do they need to do that? Things that really turn on toddlers at this age are play kitchen, play workbenches, play medical bags, or play school supplies, as well as things like dolls and cars or larger stuffed animals that they can teach, take care of, fix, those types of things. And if we invest in those toys now in late toddlerhood, we'll see that our toddlers use this type of toy daily as they work on expanding their imaginations. And then into our preschool kiddos, which are ages three to five years, we expand on this work that our late toddlers were doing with their imagination and pull that into a new level of make-believe and being creative that preschoolers are so good at. You'll probably notice that our preschoolers love to play dress up and pretend to be professionals such as doctors, the police, or ballet dancers, or sports heroes, or make-believe characters that they see from their favorite movie or cartoon series like Captain America. And it's this wonderful area of playing make-believe that can really get us excited about finding the right toy or gift for them. So dress-up clothes or costumes can really help them embody that make-believe that is so active in their mind. Another thing that we can look at are the imagination games. So anything that has to do with creating a character and bringing that to life can be really entertaining for our preschoolers. It's important to note also at this age that preschoolers can start to receive books without pictures because it actually helps them improve that imagination through the use of language. Now, of course, we'll probably have to do most of the reading yet, but Having stories in books without pictures makes our kiddos listen carefully and use their mind's eye to create a vision of the story in their head. And this skill is going to be super important when they are in school. So simply by starting to introduce some shorter stories that don't have pictures in their books will start to build up this ability in our child to use their mind's eye to create a picture in their head and really capture what they're hearing in language and transform that into a visual picture in their mind's eye. And that is a really important skill for when they enter school and have to look at concepts that the teacher is saying and somehow make order of that in their own mind. So let's not overlook the importance of giving books without pictures to our preschool kiddos. And then finally, giving our preschoolers simple board games is so wonderful because it helps them start to learn about fairness, sportsmanship, taking turns, those types of things. So 
along the lines of shoots and ladders, candy land, those types of games that really are about rolling, matching colors, moving spaces, but there's not a lot of strategy yet. We don't want to give games that have strategy built in because little ones at this age don't have the capacity to, with abstract thought to think about strategy. So we really want to do simple games that deal with matching or counting or just following steps in an order and then really focusing on their learning fairness, sportsmanship, and taking turns. So those are all really great things that we can give to our preschool kiddos. If we have school age kiddos around ages five to eight years, then we need to help them learn how to share and work together with others. So that's the main task at this age, developmental task. For this reason, um, we can encourage them to ask for board games to help them learn to follow rules, play fair, be a good sport, and enjoy the competition aspect without it letting kind of boil over and ruin the game. And along this same line, encouraging school-age children to ask for sports equipment is also a great idea. Because we know participating in physical activity also supports the previous concepts of fairness, following the rules, and being a good sport, as well as developing healthy lifestyle habits. To support physical activity, school-age children maybe could be encouraged to ask for specialized sport clothing or equipment to help them have a happy and fun and active holiday. If our kiddos aren't so much into sport, and there are those kids that don't really enjoy sport that much. So for them, we normally encourage them to take walks or bike rides, which aren't quite as um, formalized activities. And we can help them select full books without pictures or maybe even series of books that deal with themes of fairness or justice to bolster that same type of learning that they could have gotten through athletic activity, but they would get it in a different form. Also, having books that are in a series really promotes continuing on in a vein of, of concepts that is longer than just an individual book. And so things like the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe series that is very long, or the Anne of Green Gables series, or the Little House on the Prairie series, or Nancy Drew's, or whatever it might be. Those are longer series of books that can really help a child continue in a line of thought over more than just a set number of pages. Another thing we can do for our school-age kiddos is to get them art supplies and other things to make them active learners in creativity and exploration of their own ideas. Older children, often called tweens, between the ages of 9 and 12 years, grow and develop new skills that bring concerns when it comes to gift giving. It seems that kids this age are really focused on getting technology. But technology use is something that worries many parents of these older children and tweens because they have not yet developed their abstract thought fully and they don't have the ability to anticipate or solve problems that can arise with technology use. And we know that teens and tweens love everything online and they're gonna be asking for smartphones and tablets at holiday time. But I wanna assure you that with the right research and monitoring, smartphones and tablets can be adapted to allow access to the apps that are age appropriate and permit appropriate engagement with technology. However, the caveat to this type of gift is that we must always monitor their online activity to assure their safety. There also has to be a lot of teaching about risk and appropriate online behavior. Giving the gift of technology is also almost demanding that we have conversations with our kiddos about respect, privacy, cyberbullying, and coming to us when they're scared, unsure, or feeling pressured, knowing that our knee-jerk reaction isn't going to be to take away that technology because that's actually a barrier for them coming to us, but that we're going to listen to what's happening and help them find appropriate problem-solving measures so that they can continue their use of technology safely.
depending on the emotional and social development of our child, making choices about giving technology is really a child by child decision. I wish I had a one size fits all recommendation, but really we need to take a look at our child and honestly evaluate, are they emotionally and socially ready to take on the responsibility of using technology and being in online environments? And really evaluating our child's developmental age instead of just solely their chronological age will help us make that decision properly. Now, of course, it's important to note that there are also many gift options for tweens and adolescents that are not related to technology. You'd never know it by looking at advertising for this age group, but really there are. Board games are wonderful to help tweens and adolescents learn how to strategize and reflect on their choices. Games like Risk and Chess are wonderful for that. Puzzles also support their development of concentration, imagination, and order in a creative way. And construction type toys such as Legos help them connect their creativity and spatial intelligence. Then there's also toys with sound like instruments or karaoke machines that are supportive of performance and creativity. Additionally, giving experiences is also a wonderful thing to do at this age and throughout all of adolescence. Things such as going to the ballet, going on a camping trip, going to a specialty summer camp, eating in a fancy restaurant, or visiting a new city can all be options for our tweens and teens that expands their mind and lived experience. So please don't feel that technology is your only choice at these ages. There are other options that will be equally attractive and have a positive impact on our tweens and teens. So whatever age or stage our child is, we can be informed and make good decisions for our kiddos to support their natural development and fit perfectly with their desires. Choosing the right toys and gifts will help our children develop in healthy ways while also being fun and enjoyable, which means that our little one will play and play with their holiday gifts or at least have a very happy memory about their time with it. We can choose wonderfully perfect presents for our kiddos by balancing our children's preferences with their developmental stage needs and abilities. And by doing so, the holiday season will be a joy for the whole family. I hope this information from this episode has sparked some creativity for your family and how to address this season of giving. Please don't hesitate to share a comment or question or tip about finding the right gift. Just drop me an email at deanna at productiveparenting.com. And if you want to find out more about who I am and what I do, please check out my website, www.proactiveparenting.com. You can also connect with me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and find other parents just like you in those social platforms. Search for my name, Deanna Marie Mason, to find me there. And finally, if you'd like to purchase any of my books or online courses, such as newborn care or breastfeeding boot camp, you can find those on my webpage. And again, that's proactiveparenting.com. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you found this episode useful as we prepare for the holiday season. If you did, please leave a comment or review and tell a friend so that they can become a proactive parent too. Well, I'll close here. Again, this is Dr. Deanna Marie Mason signing off for now. I hope to see you again very soon. But until then, take care and be well. Bye.